traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, we have a proverbial uh, debacle going over there in the bond market, folks, uh, all down almost twofold handles uh, on the Treasury bonds and one and a half or so in the notes. Uh, Bill Ackman came out and said that he was heavily short the bonds. And for the life of me, I don't understand why someone as smart as he is, and believe me, folks, he is no dummy, why in the world would he come out and tell everybody that he short the Treasury bonds. He gave the reasons for it, and why would he do something like that? You know, you don't poke the you don't poke the tiger, you don't poke the bear. Uh, I, don't, I don't mean bearishness, I mean the bear, because if you make them mad, I mean, do you think that they're going to be embarrassed or something? I mean, I, I don't understand that. But again, I'm I'm just a technician, so I don't really know. Uh, but we've broken down. We're within just a point or two of the old lows we made three and a half months ago. As you know, I've been bearish this market for a very long time, and I will continue to be bearish because higher interest rates are on the way. There's no question about it. By the way, our guest today on the show will be none other than our good friend uh, Stan Harley. And uh, Stan has always some great stuff to talk about, and we'll be able to do it. And I want to thank everybody that showed up yesterday. We had a good day, made some money, but uh, came so close in gold. And uh, also in, uh, what was the other one we were looking at? Uh, we had one other one that was right on the cusp, and we just missed it. It was the bonds. We were trying to short the bonds, and we missed it by two ticks in bonds and 20 cents in gold, of uh, shorting both of those. And we missed it. But we had a good time. Uh, we had uh, the, the, the responses were good. The, the main thing that people were interested in, and I'll go into that in just a little bit, we went through five hours of trading, folks, and I will not do five hours again. I might do... I might do three, but not five. I, and I'll tell you why. I was worn out, and uh, I didn't recover very well. And I didn't sleep well last night because I don't know what the reason was. But today when I woke up, I decided, I said, no, nope. I said, this is going to be the day where I'm not going to do a lot of trading. I said, because this is, I'm just not feeling very good. And then if you look at the chart up there in the far right-hand corner that I just posted, that is the NASDAQ, folks, a four-hour chart going back over the last several weeks. Do you see that A, B equals C, D pattern there today? You see the three little bars on the end here? Those are four-hour bars, folks. That means that uh, it was there for 12 hours. It couldn't get below the number, and it hit the number exactly, exactamundo. And that's when it started the market up, and they've rallied. I mean, I, I think the last time I saw, well, the S&P's down just a little bit, but everything else is still looking pretty good. Now, if we get below that, then all bets are off. But let's take a look at what really happened with the E-mini S&P today when we were uh, doing the same thing in the Treasury bond, uh, the NASDAQ. Bear with me, folks, here. This is a, got to get through this. But here is the, uh, I'm going to get this up. Now, this is a four-hour chart, same thing that we were looking at in the NASDAQ. Now, we're going to look at the E-mini S&P. And you'll notice today's low to the tick exactly 1.618 of the 382 move down to here and 61% of the retracement that we made back here uh, two and a half weeks ago. This is super important, folks, because one would expect a rally here. Now, you know, look at this. We've come down from a 46, uh, what was it, 46, uh, 35, all the way down to 45.10 uh, uh, was the low. Okay, now we have just a little bit of rally so far, just 27 points. But going below that now would be uh, just uh, very, very bearish. Whether that's going to continue or not, we're going to wait and see. But that's what we're paying close attention to here, here today as we're watching some of these things here unfold. Okay, and I want to share a couple of other things that I think are important. And the big, the big thing that we did uh, on the show, the, and this was worth 
to me, worth the price of admission. And those of you that have attended all of my shows said, without doubt, this was the highlight of the five hours. And all we did, folks, because we couldn't catch everything, we were just looking for good patterns. And I'm just going to post what happened today. And this is, happens to be in the natural gas. But we did this on so many things yesterday just to prove the validity of the 382 pattern, that that was the highlight from our perspective, from my perspective, and also from many of you. But you'll notice here, this is today's action. You see the first 382 retracement here. There's your second 382 retracement here. There's your third 382 retracement here. I mean, folks, I have to do a tiny bit more search, but from research, but from my perspective, this thing is hands down the easiest and most accurate thing I've ever seen in all the years I've been doing this. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just truly amazing that we've got something like this to work with. And uh, it was really a lot of fun. We had 100 charts uh, that we gave out that I've saved over the past, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, I've been doing this for since Tom for three and a half, four years now. And I've, I've been doing seminars with Tom for 15 or 16 years. And so it was uh, really quite exciting to, to see these. We couldn't trade them all because we were seeing them in hindsight because there was so much to do. Folks, it's five hours nonstop, and I'm just not capable of doing that. I mean, I, we take a break for water. Other than that, we were in there, you know. Uh, and when you're trading, you know, you're not, it's not expanding the energy like if you're trying to teach. And so it was uh, – it was a tough gig, but five hours is too much. I think I can do three hours in a heartbeat, but five hours all by myself is a little bit more difficult uh, than I really want to do. So I'm going to uh, lay off of that again. If I do do another one uh, next year, I'll probably do maybe three hours. Uh, maybe break it up like uh, two hours one day and two hours the next. That might, that might work, but uh, five hours straight. Uh, that's just a tough one for me because it's just a little one that's just too much. Folks, let me show you what's going on here in the market here for Treasury bonds. To me, this is the chart of the day. I'm bringing it up here because this is really an important chart. And I, I, and it, it's an important chart for a lot of different reasons. But this tells you – oh, Larry, come on. Jake, I got to get back with you, buddy, to find out what in the world happens to these charts. They just disappear on me. And then I don't get to show them in here, and it's frustrating as all the GPs. And I don't like to do that. Okay, there's where we are right there. You'll see what we're looking at here is a market. There's where it was supposed to rally. You see it didn't rally here, and that's what happened today. The market gave up. Boom. And remember, they've known about this Fitch thing, uh, this uh, you know downgrade or whatever they want to call it from AAA to AA. Uh, is just pretty much down there. And, you know, there'll be double A until there's a until there's a big collapse somewhere in the world, and you'll see how quickly they come to the Treasury bond market. But we get down much lower than here, folks. We have broken the three-month rally, and that is extremely, extremely bearish because we could only rally up to that uh, 136 uh, level, and then we've been heading down, uh, you know, ever since. You can see these last few days on this four-hour chart have been quite bad. Let's take a little break. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, I've uh, uh, posted the chart of the uh, flashcards that we gave out, and uh, folks really like those. Basically goes through the 12 patterns that we look at. We've got six buys and six sells. We went through the PowerPoint presentations showing how they worked at all. It was pretty nice. Folks, so today we have Apple earnings coming out, and I heard an interesting comment today by one of the more famous people on CNBC. I'm not going to give him his name. He's a young man. He's very bright. I've uh, met him one time, uh, and he certainly knows what he's doing, but he made a comment that uh, that if Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett said this to him, it's supposedly, and we're going to secondhand knowledge, but Buffett said to him that if you gave everybody that has bought an Apple product $10,000 in cash, but the only stipulation is that they could never buy an Apple product again. He said most of the people would re, would not take the ten thousand dollars. <laughs> if you start believing that kind of stuff, folks, I have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge waiting. But today we've got Apple earnings coming out. Uh, every you know Apple's earnings. Are, how can you knock this company, folks? It's a trillion dollar company. It's got great products. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when you hear stuff like that, you got to be worried about it. That's when I hear someone like Bill Ackman come out and say that, you know, he's got this huge – yesterday he said it and he said it again today. He's got this huge position in short treasuries. Why would why would he do that? Not not good. He knows that. He's a smart man. Hell, he's a, he's one of the better poker players on the tour, you know, on the World Series tour. He's, he's really a good player. So that, that concerns me that he's able to do that. So we'll be following the earnings here. Uh, by the way, someone asked a question about Qualcomm earnings. I don't follow the stock, but I saw just a little while ago that it was down 9%. Why, I have no clue uh, why it was down at that level. The main thing that we're watching today is what's happened with this uh, – the, the S&P low and also the NASDAQ low being spot on. If we go below those folks, there's only one way you can describe what the market's going to do, and that means it's going to go down really big because you're going to looking higher interest rates and a failure at a major, major spot, and that would really be a really, really negative thing to uh, to pay a close attention to of why things are happening uh, the way that they are. But that doesn't look like that's going to happen right now. Market's still holding up really well. As a matter of fact, my 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 uh, 
assumption here, and believe me, uh, you know how that means, how you spell ass assumption, assume, uh, but what you're watching here is a fact that we've got something here where if the market rallies quietly now for three days, we got here uh, Thursday, we got Friday, say we rally today and tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, and everybody's looking at that chart, and some people are even not our charters will look at it, but if you get a quiet three-day rally there, and this is what I'll be working on over the weekend, if you just get a quiet three-day rally, maybe up to a magical number like yes, Johnny, I know it's 382, then that's going to be uh, that's going to be the one that you want to be watching, you know, really closely because uh, it's going to be really really interesting. But we'll we'll see all of this coming out. But we've had a very very emotional week. Uh, today's low, uh, when I saw that low. I said, wow, I said, this is this is truly amazing that this market could hold up, given the fact what was happening in the bond market. And I said, I know it's no way I want to be sure here is what I said, because I said, this is not uh, this is not what I want to do. When you got really, really bad news and the market doesn't go down. No, 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 no. You don't want to have any anything wrong with that. One of my favorite books, folks, I've mentioned this several times is a book by Bernard Baruch called My Own Story. And he tells the things that how to read a tape. And he says, like we just talked about, when everybody is bearish, the market has only one way to go, and that is up. And when everybody's bullish, it only has one other way to go, and that is down. That's just the way it is. All we do as technicians is to measure some of these waves and see how whether they're supposed to. You know, when we were looking at the NASDAQ a long time ago, before it had this a monumental break to the downside, uh, I want to cover gold, too, here before we get back to our good friend uh, Stan Harley. But let me get this up here with the uh, with the NASDAQ again, because it was the one that was real interesting. I want you to see but back where we were, you know, going back about three and a half weeks ago when we were making a big ABCD there. Uh, I'm trying to get it there. I'll hang on a minute, buddy. Maybe this will be it. Uh, no, it's... I'm going to try one more time, and then I'm just going to give up the ghost and not do it. Then we'll move over to the gold. Ah, come on. Okay. Let me get it up here. Just a second, folks. There's nothing worse than being a technician. Hold on. This is where we want to be. You'll see where we were several, uh, about seven days ago when we were making that high up in here in the S&P, okay? Now we come down and hit this, and we're looking for a little three-day rally. If the three-day rally doesn't come and this rolls over, look out, because that's where the uh, pedal will hit the metal, as they say uh, in the trade. So let's uh, keep our close eyes on that one, all right? Now one other question someone asked, and I can't answer this question, it's how is, how is the public going to react to the earnings? now? I didn't want to say that is a pretty uh, um, vague uh, answer because, we, first of all, you don't know who, which, who is long and who. Well, everybody's long because everybody owns Apple. But there, there, there will have to be a huge support, uh, surprise, and I don't believe Apple uh, surprises very often. I think, was it 27 out of 28 reports that they had that was always bullish? I mean, you, you want to fade odds like that? I don't think so. No, 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 no. You don't really need to do that. All I'm saying here today is that we hit some flat-out major support. I mean, just as clear as a bell. And going below that would not be a very good thing to be looking at. So that's pretty much it. I, I hope that's fair enough to what I'm looking for. Now, remember, folks, when I do this, folks, I am a short-term pattern recognition trader, and I rely on one pattern above all else, and that's AB equals CD. When I have AB equals CD, that gives me the tiny bit of an edge that I need to see whether I'm going to be right or wrong. That's that's all I do. And I'm pretty good at it, but I've been doing it for a long time. And other people can do it too, but you've got to practice. You know, you don't you don't get to play in the major leagues just by walking out of high school. You know, you got to go to the three A, you know, triple uh, A ball and other stuff, and you've got to have coaches and and all those things. So, uh, you can do it, but that's what we talked about yesterday on the show was that you got to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And eventually, you're, you're going to get it right because this is not rocket science. What I do, I'm just looking at lines on a chart. Either the lines hold or they don't. That's a it's pretty much the bottom line. And whether it's going to be that way or not for a very long time, I'm not sure. But it's been that way for the several hundred years that I've followed these stocks. And nothing's really changed in all those years. 
sure, we've got a lot of different things going on, but the, the big thing of the day is to watch this Treasury bond market because if something happens and it should have a, a rally, it could be a big one. But I'm not saying it's going to be, but when you have someone come out and make a comment like that, that is not smart. And if you see Bill, tell him that I said that. I mean, I don't care what his position is. You keep your keep your cards close to your vest. When you're playing poker, you don't turn your cards around and say, hey, look, I've got a pair of kings. Ha, ha, ha. Of course you don't. No, you say, oh, you have a droopy face, you know, look like I've got 2-7 off suit again. Hey, we've got Stan Harley coming up, folks. 877-927-6648. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Stan Harley on the line to the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, how are you doing today? I am doing just awesome. Thank you. you. You look pretty dapper there in your outfit with that beautiful tan shirt with a gold tie. So tell us what we're looking at today, my friend. How much uh, higher are we going to go? 47,000 uh, in the Dow? Well, uh, let, let, we'll, we'll discuss that here. Um, <laughs> got, got, some, got a few charts I thought I'd uh, share with, uh, with the viewers today. I um, want to kind of just frame the discussion a bit. Um, I'm... Uh, 
I'm expecting a major market peak in the not too distant future, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but uh, down down the road a bit. That's what I thought we would kind of talk about here. Okay. Um, first of all, let's let's take a look at the monthly data of the stock market. And this first chart goes back to the year 1900. And what I've noted here with the uh, with the purple vertical lines are the peaks in 1929, 1973, 2000. And uh, and it's my belief we're probably going to see a high next year. Um, but uh, that'll be about 94 years from the 1929 top, 94 years in a couple of months. Um, and uh, we need to see some things develop before that occurs that give us, gives us some clues. And that's something I'm going to discuss here in, in, just, in just a couple of slides. Okay. Uh, when will uh, we see your slides? Yeah. Yes. Are you able to see them? Not yet. No. Well, let me see. Uh, I think I know the problem. It, um, and I can remedy that. Yes. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> there it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, sometimes I need a little reminding. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, I do that every day. So welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, uh, this is uh, this is the chart I was just discussing. Um, goes back to the year 1900. And what I've shown here are the tops in 1929. 1973, 2000, and, uh, and it's my belief uh, that we've got another <coughs> significant high coming. I think it's going to come in the early part of next year, and I'll, and I'll share with you my reasons why. Uh, but these were all major market peaks, as you can see. Uh, the dominant cycle on the yearly charts, about 94 years. That's uh, Lucas number 47 times 2. 49 years, I'm mean, 94 years prior to 1929 was the peak in uh, 1835. And then just back in time, we've got increments of 94 years um, that have de defined all the major peaks all the way back to the year 1602. Uh, the, uh, the last 60 years, let's focus on that for just a moment. Um, again, a monthly chart here. And what I'm showing in, in this chart, uh, Larry, is a cycle that spans nominally 49 months. Uh, these were coming at about four-year intervals, so many analysts and market watchers referred to this as the so-called four-year cycle. And between 1960 and, uh, and the year 2000-ish, it was a pretty regular cycle. Sometimes it contracted to three years, sometimes it expanded to five, like between 82 and 87, and then it picked up the regular beat once again. But it was quite a regular cycle. And when I dump all of this into a spreadsheet and compute what's called uh, the best fit to the day series through a technique called regression analysis, it comes out to be 49 months. And wow. that was very, very regular until uh, the 2002 bottom. And then from 2002 to the present, i.e. for the last 20 years, that cycle ostensibly disappeared. Uh, and so a lot of people think, well, the four-year cycle lasted and it just went away. Well, it really didn't go away, Larry. It's still there, but it expanded by a Fibonacci factor of 1.618. Um, it's still the same cycle. So now it's 79.6 months instead of 49.2. So as you can see on the chart, uh, sometimes low to low, it's 77 months, sometimes 83, sometimes 80. But the regression analysis says it's 79.6 and assuming we get a little, a modest amount of contraction expansion, um, but it essentially comes in right in, uh, right in the area where it's due within, the standard, within one standard deviation, uh, the next recurrence is due in the May, June, 2029 timeframe. Wow. Now, with that as a backdrop, uh, let's take a look at another, another thing, another, another topic that you and I have discussed on the air here quite a bit, and I think this is a pretty important thing, and most analysts uh, uh, d d don't see it. But it's the notion of translation, right and left translation. Look at the monthly chart on the screen and notice from the October 20, 2002 bottom all the way through the present, 
all of the crests, i.e. the high point of the monthly cycle, occurred to the right of the midpoint of that cycle. Uh, so, for example, between October of 2002 and March of 2009, where did the high occur? It occurred in October of 2007. And with your eye, you can see that's well to the right of the midpoint. Right translation, indicative bull market structure. Again, the next cycle into the 2015 top, uh, also uh, right translation. The next one into the February 2020, uh, well, actually, no, continuing further into the uh, January high of last year, also right translation. <laughs> bull market structure. So anyone who says this is a bear market just doesn't understand what you and I are talking about right now. Right translation is bull market structure. And until we see left translation in the monthly cycles, which we have not yet seen, we are still in a bull market. We sure are. So uh, if we see a peak in the first quarter of next year, which I think is something I'm studying very carefully right now, we would then have the makings of left translation for the first time. And left translation, of course, would be indicative of a looming bear market. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to see how things develop. But if we do get a high first quarter next year, as I'm kind of thinking right now we might, then uh, then we will definitely have left translation for the first time. And, uh, and that would bring on uh, the big bear. But right now, Larry, the, the right translation factor is, uh, is, is indicative of a continuing bull market. And I think you're going to see new highs in the indices. Um, if we get this final high early part of next year, uh, it's my view you, you, will, you and I will see fewer stocks, fewer ETFs uh, mm -hmm. moving into new high ground. And that will be essentially a divergence from what occurred in January of 2022. And that's how final tops are made. Um, they're divergent structures so that at the final, final cycle top, there is a lessening in the number of stocks, ETFs, funds, and so forth, making new highs. And I think that's what's going to happen. Stan, uh, this high translation, left translation, that was the original work of uh, Walt Bresser, wasn't it? Yes. That's yes, uh, yeah. where, that's the first time I became aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, he published that in his book yep. in 1991. And yep. then Walter and I did a, a number of seminars together. And he was my guest speaker when I was the president of the market analysis of Southern California uh, back yep. in the day. Uh, just a, 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 a well, we got to pay a few bills here. Stay with us, Stan. We got to pay a few bills. We'll be right back, okay? You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. Please continue, Stan. This is really great stuff. Absolutely, Larry. Um, I thought we would uh, get into the, the daily data and kind of drill down just a little bit more, see what's going on near term. Uh, there is a cycle um, I have found and I've tracked for decades, literally. Um, it's what you see on the screen. And, and I've shared this with you and the viewers in the past, uh, but uh, the most dominant cycle uh, uh, on the stock market is the one that is spans 40 slash 80 trading days. 80, of course, is the double of the 40. Um, I wrote an article on this uh, in the July 2021 issue of the found for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Um, this has been the the dominant cycle for decades. It will be the dominant cycle uh, uh, long after we're gone. <laughs> But um, and, and it can, and it does come and go. Sometimes it drifts out and then re and comes back. A few years ago, it was not nearly as prevalent as it was uh, in years back. But now it's very prevalent once again. But uh, as you can see on the screen here, um, the important highs in the stock market have been occurring at 80-day intervals. Uh, um, the the most recent recurrence uh, skipped a beat. Um, or you might mark it with the marks, mar May 2nd high, perhaps. And that was a modest one. I just uh, noted that uh, the recurring pattern uh, with an increment of two between the high in mid-December and the one that just occurred uh, just a couple of days ago uh, spanned 79.6. That's the number. And oh, by the way, that was the same number on the monthly chart we were talking about a few slides ago. Hmm. Interesting how those numbers tend to show up time and time again. There's some Fibonacci math that goes into it, and that's where it comes from. It doesn't just fall from the sky <laughs> like manna from heaven. Uh, <laughs> markets go up and down. S cycles have their root derivation in, in Fibonacci Lucas numbers, I have found, in ratios. And those are just mathematical formulas that define randomness. That's all they are. Mm -hmm. Nothing mystical about it. Uh, but that's, what, that's where cycles come from. Um, so here we have an 80-day cycle. I think we topped out here just a few days ago. Um, the S&P and the New York Comp topped on July 27. Um, the NAS topped the next day, and the Dow topped August 1st. Uh, but uh, what we have here is a, an 80-day high-to-high cycle, and I think we are going to undergo a, a correction uh, that's going to span several weeks. And you're going to see some... some uh, Consolidation of the recent gains, uh, probably more sideways than hard down, uh, because I still think the dominant trend is northbound into early next year. Uh, so once we see the overbought condition worked off here in a few weeks, I think you'll have the technical underpinnings uh, once again reestablished uh, for the next move higher. And yes, I do think you're going to see uh, a number of the benchmark indices in record high ground. 
I mean, the S&P and the Dow right now are, and the NAS are not that far away from all time highs. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> if that weren't I'm enough, if that weren't yeah. enough, uh, take, let's take a look at this next chart. Um, and I'll come back to the prior one. But here's another thing that tells me, folks, we're in a bull market. These are the big three European industries, the, the, the big three European stock indices. Uh, the United Kingdom's FTSE 100, the uh, German DAX, and the France's CAC 40. Uh, the uh, FTSE just made an all-time high a couple of months ago. Uh, the French CAC 40 also did, and the German DAX made an all-time high all, last Friday. Over the long haul, uh, the big three in Europe and the North American indices, i.e. the USA and Canada, tend to move in tandem. There's a lead lag, but generally speaking, when you look for the major highs and lows on the charts, they're coincident virtually to the day. So the fact that the big three in Europe are making new all-time highs, uh, that's one more technical fact in my mind, in my toolkit, that says the USA markets, too, are going to go to new highs. Wow. Have to one be a believer in that. One thing that's kind of an interesting fact, I pulled this off of CNBC. Uh, this is Mike Santoli's work. His staff uh, did a polling of all the major Wall Street firms just a few days ago, and he found that the average top strategist target for the S&P by year end, 42.55. Where are we now? 4,500. <laughs> the median for the pros, 4,250 by year end. The yeah. highest high, 4,575, and the lowest mm -hmm. low, 3,900. So mm -hmm. um, who am I to throw stones? Um, I've had my share of misses in life, as we all have. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is interesting that uh, the top Wall Street strategists have basically been underwhelmed by the, uh, the strength in the stock market. Underwhelmed. Yeah. Well, that's the understatement of the year, Stan. There's no question about that. And now we have Apple's earnings. Now, we have a question for one of our listeners about artificial intelligence. Uh, do you know anything about the subject matter or those stocks that are involved, Stan? I don't know anything, so I thought maybe you might have something. Um, I, ha I, I have not delved into that. I haven't done it in, delved into any okay. particular Fair enough. issues yeah. okay. that I think are going to exploit that. Um, so I'm really not prepared to give, give a good answer as we speak on the air here. Okay, that's fair enough. I can't either, so I just leave it alone. It's not a, it's not an easy subject to uh, talk about. Now, uh, Stan, I wanted to ask you about the Dow Jones Transportations. They've been exploding to the upside also. Is this all part of this overall bullishness that you see? Um, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Let me look on my other screen at the transports and see what they're doing. I didn't prepare a chart today uh, for the transports. But uh, uh, the transports have done uh, – well, pretty much in line with uh, the other benchmark indices. Right now, they're up in the vicinity of their high from uh, March of last year. Or they got a bit of a ways to get up to that uh, peak that occurred, oh, on uh, November the 2nd, 2021. The high back then was uh, 18,247. And right mm -hmm. now, um, they're at 16,455. So, okay, uh, still will the trend get good. there? Um, I don't know. Um, what typically happens when, when tops are made, uh, you get some kind of a divergence. So mm -hmm. uh, that would suggest to me the potential for uh, maybe um, one or more of the major indices not going into new high ground. And um, okay. maybe the transports uh, do not. Maybe they have their seen their high for the, for the current cycle. Like, a little How bit early for me to make that <laughs> forecast. Okay. How about the bond market? We have a big collapse going on in the treasuries today with uh, spot bonds down two full handles. And we're approaching those lows we made, uh, you know, f uh, six, seven months ago. Uh, it, it's pretty, it looks pretty ominous on the charts, doesn't it, Stan? It does. I'm not a big fan of uh, the treasury bond complex at all. I think mm -hmm. the lows uh, in interest rates and the high we saw in bonds in, uh, in early 2020, a little over three years ago, is probably one that's going to stand for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. Next next time we talk, I'll, I'll show a chart, but uh, my work has found there is a 39.8, there's that number 40 again, 
cycle in treasury bonds. Uh, that cycle last uh, occurred in October of 81. You add 40 years to that, and you get the low uh, that we saw in 2020. Uh, just wow. take it back increments of 40 years, and you'll find major pivotal turns in uh, bonds wow. and interest rates. Great work, Stan. We'll have you on again soon, my friends. Stay safe. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of today's low in the S&P 500. It's also the major low in the NASDAQ. If we close below that, folks, it's going to be very, very nasty. The problem is nobody's paying attention to what's going on in treasury bonds. Maybe they shouldn't. This may be major, major low. I don't know. But something big is about to happen. Years ago, when the bonds collapsed, stocks always followed along. But this is not happening this time. So we're living interesting times, the old Chinese curse. So let's pay attention. Remember, folks, when you're trading, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. And that's the key that you want to work by, all right? Very, very important concept. But we are over a major critical level here in all of these markets. The fact that we've come down for 14 days in the stock market for NASDAQ and making a major bottom down in here is very, very important because it's a perfect ABCD, folks. As you just do the work yourself. And not only that, but it stayed there for 12 hours. That was for three four-hour bars. I mean, that's just an amazing phenomenon, a lot of support there. And, of course, it was the first one to rally, and it, I believe it is still uh, up on the day. Yes, it is. So that's a positive sign. Now, if this all changes and the bond market 
gives up even more, maybe things will change. But right now, it's not. The key today, from my perspective as a technician, is if we go below those lows at 4808, in the E-mini S&P, that is not going to be a good one. And we remember, folks, we only rallied 30 handles from the bottom. So here again, it wasn't a runaway uh, bull market like we've had in the NASDAQ before. This was just a dead cat bounce. So those are some of the things that you got to pay attention to as you look at these charts and meander through them every day because uh, – you know, it's going to be very, very interesting. Volatility has increased in everything, folks. So you got to get ready and embrace it because that's the key to making money in this is finding the patterns that look the best. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Mm -hmm.